I am very happy to be speaking with you today. Uh, me too. Thank you so much. I thoroughly enjoyed this film. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, I mean a lot. Thank you so much. It is a, it's a fun little film. I didn't know what to expect. I was in love with the trailer. And the film, uh, as much as I love the trailer and as good as the first trailer uh, is, the film is so far beyond that. Thank you so much. Uh, you have truly, for your feature directorial debut, you have, are very sure-footed in your direction and as a storyteller. You use all the tools in the toolbox, Kenya. Your production design, your costuming, your use of color, Mark cinematography. It all fits so that you are... That means a lot. Thank you, you are. So much giving us this incredible look at the differences in these two cultures, but also the similarities and the commonalities of being human. And That's what it comes down to, yes. on every level, you've done an amazing job. And Thank you so much. I mean, I'm such a big fan of your screenplay, of your writing as it is, to, to see you step into the director's chair is a real treat. Uh, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. How did you even approach this? Because this is such an interesting combination of the Jewish boy from Brentwood mixing with and hooking up with the black girl from Baldwin Hills, Ladera Heights kind of area. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, we really wanted to tell a story. Like, John at the time was in an interracial relationship with the Colombian girl and he talked about like the stuff that he was going through um and we both me and john are both la kids mm -hmm. and we were like i think this is the, you know we should write a love letter to you know the idea of like relationships and love letter to la <laughs> love letter to, to the culture and like a love letter really to love and i think that was a, a big part of like what, what our sort of what we set out to do and hopefully hopefully it resonates with people well I've got to tell you, you definitely, definitely succeed on the love letter to Los Angeles because your scene transitions where you've got those quick montages and you break it into four screens and you give it this scratchy vibe. You take it that you don't even waste any exposition. You use that as the tool to take us from Brentwood or Beverly Hills over to Baldwin Hills and Ladera Heights. We know at every moment in this film exactly where we are, thanks to your love letter to L.A. showcasing all these wonderful places. That means a lot to me. Thank you so much for noticing that. I mean, because it was really our, our whole point. Well, that works so well to your advantage. That was so smart on your part to do that. And... You took it a step further that by the time we get to the third act uh, and we have the rehearsal dinner, we're, you essentially put us on neutral territory in Hollywood. It looks like on top of the W Hotel with the Capitol Records building in the background. So it's not Brentwood, it's not Baldwin Hills, Adara Heights, Compton, or anywhere else. It's neutral territory, so to speak. That, that was a big part of it, too, for us. Um, to show that beautiful shot and that, you know, saying like uh, that icon of LA and just like, you know, just sort of like the midpoint for them. But the, the metaphor that you have in here, talk to me about breaking that down visually, Kenya, because you do it a lot with color. We've got the white on white on white uh, spa. We've got you know, more color and richness when we get into shopping or restaurants in Baldwin Hills, Ladera Heights areas. So talk to me about how you approach this visual design. We, I, I think, you know, for me, just in television, then like every, you learn like everything on that frame, you're responsible for. And so, you know, and, and going into this, you know, when we were scouting, I was like, I want to show, I want rich grades. And when we're doing color correction, I want, you know, let's show the, I want as much contrast as we can. And, you know, like I want the clothes to be colorful. I want the, the shoes to be, you know, I want purple laces. But I think that we, the idea of really sort of creating a, 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 a picture, you know, I'm a huge Barry Jenkins fan in terms of how he shoots. And a huge Wes Anderson, you know, his, his set design.
design and his costume design. And I think it's the filmmakers that I love, all of that really matters. And that goes down to the, to the music as well. You're know, saying, like, you're responsible for creating, like, every, try to, you know, stimulate everyone, every sense that they have and making the movie, you know, making process. It's, it's, it's like, I guess, as, as visceral and as, you know, immersive as possible. Well, you definitely made it very immersive, and I love the fact that you really are using the sneakers. You know, the sneaker store, that's the common, that's the, the what binds everybody. Because yes. everybody wants really cool sneakers. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's adorable, adorable. So I'm curious about your work with your cinematographer, with Mark Deering Powell, because I love your visual tonal bandwidth. You keep it very light tonally from a story standpoint, but also in terms of the visuals themselves are light, they're bright. Very easily a film like this, you could have gone a little darker in visual tone with the physical lighting, and you didn't. So I'm curious about you and Mark and how you came up with the design, the grammar that you did. I told him, I was like, I want this to look like a high boy. I want this to look poppy and bright. And, and you know, um, Larry Shear is a big, you know, I'm a big fan of, of his. And just the idea of this, how things, you know, how color and how, you know, when you want to sort of show beauty, how it, it affects everything that you're hearing, it affects the scene. And I think that was sort of, you know, whenever we would, you know, have scenes ready, we'd make sure that we were on something interesting and, we talked to costumes, we talked to set design, and we really wanted to make sure that it, we gave, you know, a frame that felt like this is compelling and something that people would want to uh, look into. Mm -hmm. Your casting is so much a part of this, and I gotta say, you knocked it out of the park with your casting. Appreciate that. I mean, we I meet... very, very lucky. Boy, oh boy, did you, Kenya! I... You couldn't have done any better than to set the stage for us about the Jewish community than to open us up on Yom Kippur. And we've got Elliot Gould, Hal Linden, Richard Benjamin. And, and, that, and he was my babe. That's whole thing. Ah! I fought, I, fought, I fought for that tooth and nail. They wanted to cut all of that. I was like, I'm not cutting it. I'm sorry, I'm not cutting it. I was like, this is important. I was like, people don't see this. People don't need the people who aren't Jewish need to understand that there's there's somebody in their in their church that reminds them of this. There's this. And I think that that how you know Richard Benjamin in particular, his show with Julia and like he's in trouble. Oh yeah, he's in a lot of trouble. Like I thought, so, I, I, so that's something I'm I'm really prideful about because it was you know part of how I want to tell the story. And it, you know we did you know get into some heated moments with that. Well, I'm so glad you fought for that, Kenya, because that is crucial in establishing the world that Ezra comes from, the world that he grows up, has grown up in. And it also lets us know that not everybody is squeaky clean. You know, Richard Benjamin's character right there, it's like, yeah, and we're talking about this on Yom Kippur at the synagogue. Okay. Um... These little touches are so important in this film to really let us immerse us in these two cultures. And, of course, then you bring in, I got to tell you right now, my two favorite scenes in the film are Eddie Murphy and Mike Epps. Mike Epps, oh, yeah. as, Uncle e as Uncle EJ, he is the truth teller in this film. And he also gives context to Eddie's character to like the sort of journey he's been on, you know, and calling him to, to, to you know, calling him, putting him in a task. And I think all, he was really important to the movie. Just brilliant. First at the rehearsal dinner and then that car scene with the two of them. And on the flip side, you've got the rehearsal dinner scene between Lauren London and Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Which is also very crucial. They, Lauren and her, they zoned out. Like, we were just quiet. You know, we were quiet. And just like letting them, they, they really zoned out and found something special for each other. You know, how do you wrangle this many people? In your first directorial, 
I mean, character, you're so used to writing a multiplicity of characters in your work, be it in Coming to America, The Witches, Blackish, you know, you can handle characters on the page, but how did you wrangle all of this talent once you're sitting in the director's chair and they're all standing in front of you? Carefully. <laughs> Ter terrified and carefully. Um, it was, I, I do think that that is one thing that, that my, that one thing, one thing that helped um, was, you know, that I luckily have been doing, you know, worked as a showrunner for so long that I wasn't quite as scared as I should have been. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I do think it, it taught me a lot in terms of like, you know, dealing with talent and making them feel, you know, that you have a plan. I think that's the biggest thing people want to know is that you have a plan. Well, and especially with these veterans that you have going in. Yeah, did, they'll eat you up. Did, did that help or, or, or put more trepidation in you to have a cast oh. th with this much experience behind them? Both. It helped me. Um, I was terrified, but it also helped me because, you know, they were all very vocal about, like, you know, things that they thought, you know, thoughts they had and, what they thought the character that they were going to embody would, would say and be, and we all, you know, the collaborative process, and I think it helped to, you know, shape a better movie. Mm hmm At every turn, everybody is at the top of their game here, and you've done a really good job of matching the comedic beats that each one brings to the table. And that's always tough when you've got so many comedians stepping into something. I agree. Although I felt like it was sort of like a when you see an all-star game, mm -hmm. and they kind of start, they're playing around at first, but then fourth quarter, everybody gets serious, and you realize just how good they are. You know, I think that the time, the fourth quarter for us, for any of those teams that really mattered, getting those kind of people together, they were like, okay, we got to kill this, and they killed it. They really did. You know, how difficult or challenging was the editing process on here? You're working with Jamie Nelson. She is my, she is my editor for life, and, and we just, we, it's painting. We lived in the edit room. We literally lived inside of here. Because you've really, you've got a great balance happening with your editing. You've got your transitions that are very rapid fire and move quickly. You've got some beautiful montages, dating montages that are so charming. And then you slow things down and you just let the scenes play out and let the performances shine. This is such a delicate balancing act with this one, especially with the comedic beats. This had to have been like... I, I appreciate you saying that. I want you to make sure you tell that quick back. <laughs> because <laughs> it was a fight. You know, they wanted, you know, you know, I think that's the thing, you know, there are you know, different, you know, voices and different people have different ways of doing things. And I don't think they're, you know, I, I'm saying this, and I don't know how uh, I've been researching it, but I don't think like a person of color has got to do like a mainstream comedy. And I feel like, you know, our beats are different. We, we view comedy different, just like when you go to, you know, black clubs or white clubs, the comedy beats are different. And how each other things, and it was a lot of fights of like, well, this should be cut like, you know, the breakup or make meet the parents. I'm like, that's not how I want to, how I see this. this the voice of this, you know, I think things play out, I think things are longer, I think things go on a little bit too long sometimes, and jokes go on a little bit too long sometimes, and I feel like, um, I feel like, you know, that is, you know, something I'm really glad that I fought for, and maybe it, it opens it up for the next kid, who, you know, might not be someone who people necessarily knew, you know, but they have the voice and they have something they want to say, right, give them an opportunity to sort of stretch their voice a little bit. Well, I think you, you know, you're editing what you and Jamie did. I'm glad you fought for this as well, because you've got two distinctly different voices. We've got the, the, you know, upper middle class Jewish community, Jewish culture voice. And we have the, you know, the upper middle class, essentially, you know, black culture voices. And very different manners of speak, very different manners of conveying. And as we hilariously are reminded of again, different methods of hair. Jamie did all of Blackish with me. She did, you know, she did everything I've, you know, basically done in my golf. We did tons of times. And she is the most collaborative, brilliant editor slash 
slash producer slash partner that could have. And like, you know, she knows that I live in, I'm not a note giver. I got this is not how I how I edit. You know, I live in the edit room. You know, and like, so it takes a lot for an editor to sort of like release and let you feel like you can, you know, be free and at the same time, you know, pull you back. Like, it was, it was so much. She was absolutely my part of that's one thing that truly amazed me with this, Kenya, is the pacing that we have that's appropriate for each culture. I agree. I bet, I bet I'm a juicy bat, but I don't know that everyone else sees that. You yeah, know? well, they need to. I, it's part of the world. They need I, to. <laughs> I agree. I know, I agree, but I think that's just important about having new voices. Yeah. And letting those voices sort of, you know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but if it works, Suddenly, you see yourself having, you know, things become different and you know, derivative of, you know. And I feel like Judd Apatow got a chance to change things the way he did things for this person and Wes Anderson. And, you know, I feel like, but you gotta give those voices a chance. And I think the thing I was lucky with is that I had a career that, you know, it was a little bit harder to sort of, you know, come out, coming out, added on a deal like Netflix when I sold it, you know, and coming coming out of, you know, the deal and, you know, things I had done, I, it gave me a lot of, um, a little bit more leeway than I think a normal first time director would get. Mm-hmm. I'd be remiss not to ask you about your music, your needle drops and your score. So- Jay Hilfer, Jay J- Hilfer and Elm is like my, my music partner, we, we have a label together, and Bacon is who gave me to the the composer, he did Kendrick Lamar's album and other albums. Yeah, I think he's a they're both geniuses. And like our music is a big part of anything I do. Yeah, and like anything you watch with my music is a big part of it. I really feel like it, it, it helps her it's a motion motion and it helps to really sort of sell this movie for what it what it was, the energy and tone. I love the blend between the needle drops and the score that then ties it all together. Great. Really well, well done. Well, one last well, thank question. You so much. One last question for you, Kenya. I've got to okay. ask: What did you learn about yourself as a filmmaker, as a storyteller, in bringing you people to life as a director? This is trust your gut. You know what I'm saying? And half, and half people around you, you know who trust you and I feel like you know and, but you know be ready to and when you're shooting a scene edit it in your head you know what I'm saying I think that that is something I, that you know for me I, you know other people may not see what you're doing but like think about it as you're sitting there I'm a big playback monitor guy I love having favorite monitors being shown to action pictures music, but like I want to I want to see how it's framed I want to think about you know I look at the aliens that I'm, I'm editing as I go because I feel like they I'm building the movie in my head and giving my editor notes so that the assembly is closer to what we think the picture will be, you know, and so that, that, I think that is something that I will, moving forward, will make sure that I continue to do. Well, I can't wait to see what you give us next, be it on the page or sitting in the director's chair, Kenya. Job well, so I, well done. I appreciate you. That's so sweet. Especially to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kenya. Bye-bye.